in a in a bad way. Right. It, it's a little misleading to say to say the 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 um, compensation is one hundred forty eight thousand five hundred dollars. If the minute you say yes, there's a five percent raise on top of it. Right. And You're actually starting at at one hundred forty eight thousand five hundred dollars plus five five percent. Okay. And, 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 and yeah. likewise, the, and the reason why it's written that way is because this current contract is essentially written that way. So um, tomorrow, or J July 1, he's going to be getting a 5% increase okay. on his current salary. So it's just, and again, this is all just about trying to keep things consistent for everybody so that when, we, when, we're, asking, when we're asked about them, we can say with a straight face that, yeah, everybody's about the same. And so everybody gets their raises at the same time. Everybody starts out at the same, at this, at the same level. Sorry, or roughly the same level. So. Okay, I, I, I've made my point. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Member Sanders? Yeah, <clears throat> I guess I'm a little confused too, and I've got some questions. Um, so it says he's going from a management services director to an airport executive director. So he's still a director, but he's going from one department, and which used to oversee the airport, but now he's solely focusing on the airport. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, my other question is how many assistant city managers do we have? Uh, in the organization right now, we have two, and we and we are proposing to stay at two. So one is the would be um, if I can just use names, I'll use yeah. Mike Chambliss and Brett Miller. Those are the, those are the two that if there's a prolonged leave of absence by me or vacation, those are the two that we usually assign to do that in in the event that I'm gone. All right, and then yeah, I'm just confused uh, because this contract was not set to expire. Uh, I think it just got renewed right before we came on. So I'm just wondering why we're creating a whole new contract. And I think you talked a little bit about that, but if we could probably further that discussion at some point in time. Because um, um, it says here, the city needs Mr. Chambliss to have the ability to focus on major improvement projects and the future economic development potential at the airport. But I'm, I'm guessing he was already doing that as part of his old job description, correct? Yeah, but, but as you can imagine, I mean, you, you see him out and about doing, you know, a lot of other things as well. So, I mean, when you're taking the entire yard and doing parks, et cetera, I mean, we just finished the, um, Mike will tell you that he's been spending a lot of time at McCarthy Park as we're start, starting to finish that up. Um, and, and so the idea, again, is, is that I, we as the uh, community, if we want the airport to succeed, I think this is the best place for him to be to succeed and make sure that that operation uh, is successful. And I will also say, not that this is not, not that this is a reason to or not to approve, but keep in mind the airport runs as an as an enterprise um, zone. This is not necessarily a hit on the general fund. The money that's made at the airport is all stays at the airport. So mm -hmm. if Mike's not successful, and and as the economy turns or whatever, then yes, adjustments do need to be made. There's no question. Um, but I think that, I, like I said, I think right now, given the stuff that we have going on out at the airport, it, it's it is important. But by moving him to the airport, there may be a financial impact because we may need to hire a new director to fill the shoes of the position he's leaving. If, 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 at least initially, the, the intent for me would just to put somebody in the interim so there wouldn't be a huge cost increase for doing that. No, we're not going to go and hire. I'm not suggesting that we go out and hire a new community services director or somebody, mm -hmm. a yard superintendent, whatever the magic title is that we come up with out at the yard. That's not necessarily my intent. That's not part okay. of this here. And uh, lastly, I would just say that I would definitely support what the vice mayor is saying, and I'm, I don't have any uh, reservations about holding off a little bit and exploring the, what was it, the severance package and the increase that he was asking about. So, thank you. Councilmember Lenore? Yes, thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> well, we always talk about we want to have competitive wage to get those good people here. <clears throat> I worked with Mike, so I have a little more insight than, than maybe the rest of the council. They are indeed at will employees. Times get tough, you can reorganize, you can lay off. We already know this. We want to be competitive so that we get the quality executive directors here. Um, the problem is, is we've gotten spoiled with people running multiple departments. It wasn't like that before. Time got tough, time got tough. Money's got short, so we had to do that. I don't think it's reasonable to expect that somebody's gonna run the whole airport and the whole public works where I also worked. So I know about there's a lot of work at public works. Um, it was good. He's been the biggest money saver in salaries since, since he got here. This man works hard and he finishes stuff he starts. He's good. This is the kind of employee that you wanna retain. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Okay. Uh, as I said earlier, my, my concern is performance review. We haven't had a discussion about that. This is a very important position. We all, I think we all agree on that. I have an issue with the 5% increase per year. I made that clear in the past and I would like to have more time to uh, go through some of the things that were brought up as far as the severance package and a little more time to see what is reasonable what is fair one more comment so with that councilman Eleanor he's going to get the five percent July 1st so what's the difference mm -hmm. yeah different different position <laughs> either way you cut it he's going to get the five percent on July okay. 1st whichever job you put him in so there's no there's no point to that okay is there a, is there a motion or is there any more comments well, I'll make a motion uh, in lack of one. I, I would like to um, make a motion to uh, bring this back on a date certain. I don't want to let it hang up. Um, I think I've, um, since I'm making a motion, um, um, the purpose of uh, bringing it back on a date certain is to give um, the HR a chance to put together a little package for us. As soon as we get back, I hope that we can take a look at and uh, and, and make a decision. Um, I do not have a I'm not doing this, uh, I, want, I want to say this as part of my motion. Uh, the, the purpose of this is, is to review all the information available and uh, make sure that uh, we have it all, all documented and, uh, and, then, um, and then make, a, make an evaluation. That's my motion. Do you have a date in mind, sir? Well, it, it, it would have to be a date certain. Um, when, when are we meeting again in August? The 5th. And the second meeting? 19. I believe the second meeting would be better because um, other members here have other things they want to bring up. And therefore, if we do it the day we come back, I don't think we'll have time to discuss it uh, between us uh, here in the public eye. Okay. That is your motion? That, that is, is my motion. I believe with Thank the you. items that city manager had mentioned also, was this in this category or was that the other one? The additional description that was the, that other, was the other one before okay yeah i would okay. i i will i will can i amend my motion before it's seconded Absolutely. is that allowed yes sir thank you i amend my motion to include uh, uh, the additional um, description of uh, job performance that uh, the city manager put forward and i i appreciate it thank you very much okay, there's a motion is there a second second motion second all in favor aye 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 against Aye. Aye. Motion carries 3 2. <coughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and move to item A5. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a, a very similar um, contract for Mr. Swanson as the Development Services Director. Um, he has been with us now three years. His contract um, is expiring this month. Um, uh, without an extension of his contract, it would terminate in one year. Uh, so staff is uh, recommending that um, the city of Hollister uh, renew a, a contract, a new three-year contract. Again, similar uh, terms and conditions as the last one that was previously discussed. There is a six-month um, severance package associated with it, and there are the three 5% uh, increases uh, um, uh, due um, upon execution. Um, I will say this, uh, it's the only slight difference between um, uh, Mr. Swanson's uh, contract originally and, and um, uh, Mike Chambliss is that uh, there was not an escalator at all um, over the past three years with Brian. Brian's, um, uh, Mr. Swanson's contract was set at like 126, I believe, and, it stayed, and it's still at 126. So he has not received an increase um, over the past three years. So um, with that said, staff recommends that the city council adopt resolution 2019-158, um, authorizing the city manager to execute a contract for Brian Swanson um, as the position of development services director. Okay. There's a, thank you very much. Is there any questions, comments? Councilor or Vice Mayor Richmond? I basically have the same comments. However, we have to find an interim solution, I feel, what's fair. You mentioned there was no escalator last three years. He had no escalator in his original contract, no. 
I'm not prepared to sign a three-year contract at this time. I wonder if we can legally modify the resolution to give him the upcoming 5% since he hasn't had any escalator and then hold off on the three-year contract until we we get the same information on the 19th. Is there a way to do that? Councilmember Richmond, I, that, I believe that motion would be appropriate under these circumstances. Or allowable, I should say. Allow. Um, obviously, we'll have to hear from the rest of the council, but that, that's what I prefer. I think, I think going three years without a raise is, is, um, is a long time. Um, and um, I, I think um, the situation is a little different from, uh, from um, um, Ms. Chambliss, who's been, who's been with us, um, and, and has uh, had a raise coming also, but but because his contract is expiring, I would like to make sure that we don't run it out. That's not my intention here. My intention is just to do the same, to get the same information. So I will try to make a motion uh, uh, after after people um, have their comments, the, and someone else might make a motion in front of me. I just I appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other so, questions or comments? Just clarification. So. You wanted to extend it for him to get the 5% increase? So his contract will begin um, immediately. He will um, get the, the essentially the 3-5% uh, increases over a period of three years. So this would be a new three-year contract, just like he originally signed. But for the next three years, it would terminate in 2022. Um, again, if it's not renewed um, right after the 2022 date, he has 12 months, and then it automatically terminates. But what is the vice mayor proposing? Oh, Well, I haven't. Yeah, I think we need to hear from people yeah. first. All right. Any other comments? Yes. Councilman Eleanor? Again, <coughs> I, I feel bad because you, you hire people and then you, for no one reason that I'm hearing, you don't want to extend a contract. So I'm wondering if the one year is acceptable to the development services director. And I think that's short term, but if it's something that he accepts, I might be able to go with that but really um, uh, the norm has been three years and the severance package has always been again they are at will employees we can hire them we can fire them uh, regardless of a contract correct they're at will with a contract yeah so th those are my comments okay Bill just for clarification Currently, he said the salary is 120. I won, won, it was at, at 126, I think it was. 126. Yeah. Okay. The new one is proposed at 148.5. Correct. And upon signing, there would be an immediate 5%. Correct. So I'm going to, as it was mentioned in the previous comments, I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm, no, I'm not a little uncomfortable. I'm very uncomfortable about getting a 5%. Why not just list it in there at, at the original starting point? Especially at this point, he does get a bump. It's not going the other way in this one. The other, the last example was coming down in salary. This one is actually right. going right. up. Yes, yes. And but I, again, uh, um, if I, if I, if I may, I'll, I'll, I mean, of course, this is what my role is, right? My role is is to make sure that our employees um, get everything they they can or, or and or deserve. And one of the things I always hear is, is how, how do we compare to the other cities or agencies around us? Well, I can tell you there isn't a community development or development services director that's being asked to do what Brian is being asked to do on a day-to-day -day basis who's making $148,000. RMA director just at the county, I think, signed for 195 or six or whatever that was. That job is obviously quite a bit different than what we're asking Brian to do, but I don't think it's any less important. And, and so one of the things I would say is that, again, in order for us to keep keep um, competitive um, and making sure that we have um, the, the, the brightest and, and the best talent available, uh, we have to pay these people. It just is the way it is. And I, I, don't, I don't know how to say it any other way than that. We were fortunate to bring um, Mr. Swanson in 
three years ago. We were fortunate to bring him in at a price that we did, but now he has engineering underneath him. Yeah. He has code enforcement. He has cannabis. He has some of these other things right now um, that it didn't start out that way. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, will, I will leave it at that. Yeah. No, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up. And I don't think the, the conversation is about the quality. I think everybody has worked with him feels probably the same way. I think it's just a conversation, making sure, verifying a few things. And again, I'm going to go back to the conversation about a review. Um, these are top department heads, and in the closed session meeting, I'd like to hear all the other accomplishments, and we go a little back and forth. We've done that in the past with other uh, top level uh, department heads, and I think it's an important conversation to have, and I think we should have actually had it before we got to this point. Probably would have been a wiser. Well, well, again, and with all due respect to the uh, council, I will, I will go in with saying this. My job as the, as the administrator of the organization is to have these folks that work for me and I work for you. Um, I usually tell everybody who's at will under contract with us is that every single day you're being evaluated. You wouldn't necessarily be here because um, let's be honest, I think um, Mayor has been here through a few of our terminations. It happens when people are not performing. This is not a free ride. So I want to make sure that everybody realizes that we have had terminations. We have had to pay severance. But I think overall, the organization itself is in a much better place now than it was when we were going through some of those or dealing with some of the individuals that we have in the past. So um, like I said, if, if we want to have um, discussions in closed sessions about my contract and my evaluations and other things get brought up, that's absolutely OK. But I don't necessarily feel comfortable bringing the, um, our department heads um, evaluations, so to speak, into closed session. Again, if you're unhappy with that performance, you need to let me know. And then when you become unhappy with the, the performance of the city manager, there's repercussions for that. So I, I, I just think that there needs to be a true uh, sort of cushion or, or separation between the city manager, council, and staff. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Richard. I, I just want to make my position clear. I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, intimating that I'm not happy with anybody's performance. Oh. Oh, okay, I, I want to make my position perfectly clear. I'm not intimating that that they they're not making enough money, or they're making too much money, or or anything. What I what I want to do is I want to get the information together. I want to see it all all in a package. I want to see these comparisons. I want to get a good idea. I want to look at, I want to look at the other um, surrounding um, cities, um, Morgan Hill, obviously Gilroy, the ones that are close, both um, size-wise, and they're, and I understand they're bigger and they, they're different situations, and and I just want to look at it all, and, and and when I'm comfortable with it, I'll certainly make a recommendation. I'm, I'm not trying to be coy. If I was not happy, uh, if I. Uh, um, if I, if I intended not to give them a contract, I would say something else. What I'm asking for is to get the information all, all together. And although I, I trust your judgment, um, I eventually have to, have to answer to, um, to people, um, uh, other employees, as well as not just the voters. I'm not just worried about the voters. I think it's fair to other employees. You know, to say somebody gets a 5% raise, I'm just using an example. I'm not, I'm not using it as a bad example. So when someone gets a 5% raise, yes, a 5% raise for X is the same as a 5% raise for Y. But, but, but when, you, when you convert it into dollars, the 5% raise for X and the 5% raise for Y can be awful, an awful lot uh, apart. So Y, depending on how much Y makes, uh, the 5% raise for, for Y may wind up to be a week's pay for X, depending on depending on how, it, how different, uh, and we understand they have different responsibility. We understand management, so I understand all of that, and um, I'm not trying to save 30 days worth by by putting it off a month. I assure you, that's why I say I believe um, since these are individual contracts, they're not they're not um, written in stone. Uh, if we give if we give somebody a five percent raise today, because they haven't had a raise in three years, and we come back and say, okay, we're going to give you a, a three year contract, we don't have to start it out with a five percent raise. Maybe we could start it out with a three percent raise because they've got five percent today. You understand what I'm saying? 
So, so that's, that's my purpose. My sole purpose is to make sure that I'm comfortable with the numbers. And at this point in time, I just, I'm not comfortable with the 5%, 5%, 5%. And I have worked hard to analyze our um, compensation compared to others. And, 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 you know, we may not be there, but I'll tell you, we were this far apart, if the public can see it, we were this far apart several years ago. We're a lot closer now, and, and we're getting there. So uh, that's my feeling. I'll let someone else talk, and if not, I'll try and put something together that makes some sense. Okay, Council Member Sendez. Yeah, uh, I just want to support what the Vice Mayor is saying. Um, it's not personal, but we keep hearing that it's at-will employees, and um, but they do have a contract, and I think that we can't just fire somebody without them breaching the contract uh, likewise. No, that's actually the city manager can have a really bad day and and terminate. We give what's okay. called a 10-day, uh, we put them on admin, administrative leave for 10 days, and that gives us enough time to take care of the paperwork, and, and basically they're done. That's the agreement they're signing, um, essentially. The, the only difference is, is that if I do that to them uh, as an at-will employee, we pay the severance package. If they do something to mm -hmm. that, and, and so and that would be what would be disputed. It would be the severance package. Okay. So um, that, and then I want to say that it's, um, yeah, it's not that we're, or that I would say that it's not that I um, dislike anybody's um, services they provided, but I do feel a little hesitant as well. And if there's other council members that have questions or I don't think it's an unreasonable request just for it to look into that um, and do some comparison. So I would support that as well. Thank you. Council Mayor Lundor. Uh, final comment. Um, so we have another department head running multiple departments. Uh, we used to retain a public works director. They weren't cheap. Now we have Brian who uh, s works closely with Danny Hillstock. I believe that's his stamp they're using now. I'm not sure if Brian's public works. Uh, we don't really have a public works, but, but used engineering. Utilized, okay, so Brian runs engineering on, uh, on top of development services, which is a huge job in itself. I didn't hear him whining when we threw code enforcement at him either. This is an employee that takes what's given to him and doesn't complain. These are the kind of employees that you want. Code enforcement's not easy. He took it without any comment. So again, a department head running multiple departments. I have to respect that. I also like to take the city manager's recommendation that we pay him for um, uh, to heart. So I really think that uh, the contract should be three years, uh, shouldn't just dangle the one year. Um, and I do believe that he is worth that wage running those multiple departments in lieu of public works director. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Spitzer. Um, I just <coughs> want to um, say that I agree with uh, Councilwoman Lenore. Um, Mr. Swanson <coughs> does multiple, multiple jobs. Um, I think he's overly qualified for any position in this um, city. And I do believe that we should go with a three-year contract with a five, five, and five, because an at-will employee, like our city manager said, can get fired at any time. None of the other employees who are in a union can be fired like that. They have the union to back them up. These people do not have a union to back them up. So I, I am all for the contract. I am for a three-year contract and a five, five, and five percent increase over the next three years. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Okay. I think we have a speaker card now. Elia? Yes, speaker. Speaker. <laughs> um, Elia speaker Salinas, thank you. Good afternoon or good evening, um, council members. Um, what I am not comfortable with is the fact that we bring in talented people and now you're putting these individuals in a situation where they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and if there's a better offer and more and the community is out there pay more than we do. We have very competent, as Council Spencer, uh, Spencer said, overqualified young man who does a lot for this community and for this city. He's out there in meetings. He never fails to be out there. He's accessible to everybody. You all up there know that he's accessible to it. In three years, this man has done a lot. And it's disrespectful to the position of the city manager to not to take his word that this person is valued and deserves this. Three years is 
goes by quick. I can't believe it's already been three years that Mr. Swanson has been here. I think I just, I figured I just met him a, a year ago or two years ago, and he's been here three years already. Do not sit up there and give the impression to the other employees that you do not value them because that's what I'm hearing right now. Okay, thank you. There are no more speakers. Okay. Vice Mayor Richmond. Yeah, I just want to make sure I, I um, make my point because I'm, I'm a pretty blunt person, I think. I think I'm known for that. I don't know how we get from a point of me saying I'd like to see some more information concerning the rates to say, to move that to say we don't value our employees. If we were running private industry, the first thing I would be saying is what is the competitive rate? I mean, I don't get to put any of this money in my pocket and walk home with it. We have to pay it. We have to pay everybody. We have to pay for everything we do. And I'm not trying to get anybody on the cheap. I assure you. I've asked for 30 or 40 days, whatever it is, uh, to the 19th, close to the 50 days, to be very frank with you. I've asked for 50 days only because we're, we're gone in July. If it was up to me, we wouldn't be gone in July. You've heard that speech. But we are gone in July, so I can't, I, we can't do anything in July. If, if we were here, I would say bring it back in a week or two weeks, but we're not here. There's no, there's no inference here that uh, they're not worth the three-year contract. The, the, simple, the simple issue is, all I said is, I would like to see what other cities are doing for severance pay. And I'd like to see what other cities are doing for guaranteed raises. This is, you know, 5% CPI compounded three years, I've complained about this before, is, is, a, is a raise. It is not just a CPI. And maybe a raise is appropriate. And I feel we should pay people for what they do. Um, I just can't, I just, these are very important positions. I, I just don't think we, I can, I can take them, although I respect the city manager and often agree with them, more often than not. I think, um, I think I, uh, to, I have to satisfy myself. And to satisfy myself, I need that information. I, I just can't work in a black hole is what I call it, with no information about this. I can't compare, I wanna compare. I wanna see, you know, it may turn out that we're, we're underpaying. I don't know, I wanna see the numbers. This is, there's no reflection on their value to say, hey, come back and see me in 50 days because we're not here for 30 days. I can't do anything about that. So I want to make it clear where I'm at and the fact that I'm offering uh, Mr. Swanson a, I'm going to offer him a 5% raise, hopefully, if I get to make a, I get to make a resolution here. I mean, uh, a proposal is not an insult. It's, it's saying basically, we didn't do anything for him for three years. We got to do something right now so that while we're waiting, He's not worrying, is there anything coming, okay? I mean, I think we own that for three years at least, so. Uh, I guess I'm willing to take the heat and, um, and I'll let somebody else speak, yeah. What I do wanna make sure we're, we're clear about, and I think I'm, I'm hearing this uh, as far as making it a personal deal. It's not, it's not a personal deal. But you know when it does become personal is when we get to the situation where we're in financial as in the past, where we were seriously having major financial issues in our, in our community. We were laying off people, cutting their salaries, and everybody was just, well, what, what do we do? You know what, that is not fair to our employees. I've always said from day one, we need to build a community, a city, that can function financially long term, so we're not our staff is not worried about being laid off tomorrow when the downturn comes. They know we've planned ahead. They know they have a secure job and they're doing the best they can do, as I would say they do. I caution everybody when everybody says, well, we gotta compare ourselves to all the other surrounding areas. If we're gonna do that, let's also compare the amount of money we get from property tax as the other communities. Because I can tell you right now, and most people in this community do not understand this. We get a fraction, a fraction of the property tax other communities get. And we've done remarkably well 
in our community to turn ourselves around. And for me, I want to make sure we don't get ourselves back in a bad situation. I want to make sure whoever's with us is going to be here and they know they have a secure job and we're all going for a common goal. I don't think it's too much to ask to take a little more time to understand some of the numbers. I think it's important. I think it's very important that we're all very clear on what's happening and the performances that are going on. Again, we have some great people working for us, but we all need to make sure we're on the same page. And just to say, or turn it around to, uh, you know, this or that, is probably not fair, not only to the employee, but to the community. Councilmember Spencer? Yes, um, I've just brought it up. For a uh, planning development manager in Gilroy, their yearly salary is $168,000. Mr. Swanson is making a lot less than that. And even with a 5% raise at what he would be starting out is still less than $68,000, $168,000 a year. So we sit up here all the time and talk about getting qualified people in here to stay here in Hollister. And the only way we're gonna do that is pay them what they need to be paid. We're not, it's just not the city. The county's having the same problem. We are a training ground. People come in here for a few years, they go to Santa Cruz County, they go to Monterey, they go to Santa Clara County where they make 10 times what they're making in this town. We talk about economic development, we've got to start doing it. I know it's gonna hurt salary wise, money wise, but if we do not pay our employees the going rate, and we're still paying them under the going rate of Gilroy, which we wanna be compared to Gilroy, if we're still paying $20,000 under, we need to make that up. I say we accept the three-year contract at the going rate of 148.5 with a 5% increase, and that also goes for Mr. Chambliss. I know we've tabled that, but I'm gonna say that. I think we're making a big mistake. Okay, thank you. Right. Council Member Sendis. Yeah, just to point out, I don't think that we can compare just the salaries um, as well. We need to really look at uh, detailed as far as like what revenue they're bringing in. So when we bring it back, and if we're going to compare ourselves to other cities, I want to see what amount of revenue they're bringing in and then what they're paying out as far as salaries, because I don't think it's an accurate comparison. Um, it just doesn't seem like a smart business decision if we're going to be paying more than we're bringing in. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on during the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we accept resolution 2019-158 authorizing the city manager to execute an employment agreement with Brian Swanson as development service director. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Against? No. No. Aye. Motion does not carry. I'd like to make a motion, please. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we um, give Mr. Swanson an immediate 5% raise. We table the item um, for a three-year contract until a date certain being the 19th of August, 2019. And um, ask that the city manager put have the HR uh, put together the same information concerning uh, Mr. Swanson's position as we spoke about the airport position. Uh, let me ask the city manager questions since he's finished there. Do you need any further direct? Would you need any further direction? Uh, no, do you I have think, the people? I think, I think what, I, if I could paraphrase, I think what the yeah. council is asking for is a is a small class and compensation study related mm -hmm. to the positions of development services director and the uh, airport manager right. or executive director of the House Airport um, with other benefits as as a as a as associated right. with those. If I, if I make that motion, do you do you have adequate um, resources to get that done during the period of time we're talking about? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Question okay. on the on one more question for clarification: When does this current contract expire? Okay. So yeah, the the interesting thing about uh, Mr. Swanson's contract right now is, is again we're in that fourth and and, and quote unquote final year. So. Um, well, I'll have a discussion with Brian um, after the meeting and, and come up with something that is amenable to him. But essentially, what this last 12 months does in the event that the city council doesn't approve an extension of his contract, 
it's kind of like a severance period of time, right? He has a year, he knows that he is not going to be renewed, and so he'll be looking for a new job during that year. That's what that 12 month period at the end of the contracts are for, okay? So, I mean, I don't, I don't get the feeling that he feels that that's the way the council feels about him at this moment, but I did, that's what that's about. Thank I mean, I hope that's not what he's feeling, because I'm not getting that from you folks. I'm just getting that you want a piece of information that, uh, that I haven't been able to provide you. I think, in other words, you want to make it clear that his job does not expire on the first. Uh, it, yeah, it, no, it, his job. It's, it, he's still there for a year, but really what we're trying to do right. is see a little more time to get some more information in. Correct. That's, I think that's the I, motion. How do I need to phrase that motion to make sure that the, that the raise takes effect in the next pay period, or how does it work? Uh, immediate would, upon I, upon approval. I, I, th I think the best way to say it, um, uh, Councilman Richmond, is is uh, the first full period full the first full pay period after tonight's meeting. I like we'll, to I like to modify my uh, my motion okay. to uh, propose a uh, five percent raise effective the first full full pay period following tonight's meeting, and to bring back um, uh, the information and proposals. Um, on on uh, August the 19th, which is the second meeting after we return from the uh, from the recess or whatever we're going to call it. Okay, that's my motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? And I'll second that, Mr. City Manager. If we can just add to the direction that we're comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, so we're getting a full picture of cities that are comparable to Hollister as much as we can. We we have a um, councilman Resendez. In the past, we've kind of had this list of about twelve cities that are comparable to us. Perfect. But I can promise you that it's never going to be apples to apples and oranges to oranges. I understand. That just doesn't work that way. But right. we'll do our best. Thank you. Because we're not organized the same, right? Yeah. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Five zero. Go to item A six. Hi, Mayor and Council. Um, as HR, we've been asked to bring forth a new job description for the senior planning position. Um, the uh, planning department is, has somebody re retiring, and we feel uh, that it was the best time to uh, clarify their job position to be more uh, current to, to today's time. This position is actually funded by the successor agency funds that we receive. Uh, from the wound down, wind down art redevelopment agency, we get uh, $250,000 a year for uh, administration of the successor agency, which would cover this salary. So, I would, any questions? Thank you. Right. Just if we can for a second. Uh, so, just to be clear, so we're not creating a new position then? Correct. You just we're, clarifying we're, yeah, what that yeah. position is? We're, yeah, we're re the. Person that's retiring was program manager under the redevelopment agency. We've been having them do do planning items. Now we wanted to clarify that position to be a little bit more accurate. Okay, I appreciate that. that need. I thought this was a whole new position, so no, thank you for that correct. input. Okay, Vice Mayor Richard. That was my comment, basically, but I want to point out that uh, this is going to be a position that's going to need, need a lot of um, overlap time, yeah, in my opinion. To so I'm going to support an immediate hire to, okay. to do that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Okay. Is there a motion? I move that we adopt resolution number 2019-159, approving the fully funded senior planner position in the Development Services Department slash Planning Division and a revised job description. Okay, I'll second. A, there's a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> motion carries 5-0. We'll go to item A7. Okay. Now this one is a new position that we're asking for. Uh, the planning staff and uh, uh, engineering staff have been uh, spending a lot of their time answering phone calls, helping people at the front counter, and distracting the, the current planners and engineers. So we feel that uh, we need somebody that could be at the front counter helping them, uh, citizens that come into the position or come into the, into the department to uh, like I said, make those staff members that, that much more efficient. Well, let me ask, will this help us get the general plan done? 
the updated I, general plan. I, the thing I was going to add to you is the department head is here, so I will direct those kind of questions towards him. I would like to hear from the department head. Uh, good evening. Brian Swanson, Development Services Director for Hollister. Um, <clears throat> the problem we have in the department is that we have um, two assistant planners and two assistant engineers. And I would say three hours of their daily work period is, is, is being taken up, going to the counter, answering questions, talking to realtors on the phone, talking about zoning. Um, and so they're very diligent people, wonderful team members. What they do is many times they work overtime to catch up on the work that, they're, that they have going on. This person will allow staff to focus solely on their day-to-day -day duties. Um, this is a development services technician, so this person is going to be covering really two very important divisions within the development services department. And uh, to answer your question, uh, Mayor Velasquez, the general plan's got to get done. We've got to get going on that. And um, we, we understand the task that's before us. This person will help us answer phones to take our planners and focus them on reading and writing and getting staff reports done. So, I appreciate that. And again, I want to make sure it's being pretty clear about this. This is it's probably one of the most important things we can do in the city to get that general plan done. And if it does make that difference, and we could structure it to make sure that they have more time to do what we need to do to get done, that's a, a good thing. Yeah, it, it really does. Uh, this, this person will help the department um, exponentially, and we have a goal. We've got to get this goal done for the council. So, okay. Any other questions, comments? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor Richmond. Uh, uh, Brian. Yes. How are we doing on um, making sure that we, we get paid for the work that these folks do that contributes to a specific project? Now, I understand when they're working on the general fund, we, we, we can't, you know, that's for everybody. We, we can't charge anybody. Nor do I expect anybody to s sit there with a pad and say, I was just on the phone 10 minutes with, with so-and-so who want to know about zone this. Uh, we got to charge them five bucks. Yeah. But, but, but I want to make sure we roll, we roll this, that portion of the, of the time where they're working on things that do not fall under the California Open Records Act, that yep. they are actually giving advice not just providing information, but giving advice. I want to make sure somehow enough, enough we roll that into the budget so that when we charge our hourly rate, whatever that is, for people who need specific things that we make sure we do that. Can, we, can, can you just take that under advice? Yeah, absolutely, and I'll be frank with you. Um, currently, right now, we're working with Will Dan on a user fee study for the Development Good. Service Department. Okay. Um, I expect the council to receive that study in October, and you'll see that uh, a lot of the funds that will be created if the s study is is approved okay. will help support staff uh, staff time Good. in particular. So, Good. Thank you very much. Sure. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Lenore. Councilmember Lenore. Uh, yes. Well, I'm very familiar with this department, and uh, I guess what I want to say is you finally aren't going to get it for free because that's exactly the job that I did. I helped the planners, the zoning, the lot coverage, the flood zone, the seismic zone, the, the appraisers. This is the job I did, and they always appreciated me for this job, but, but then I retired, and they didn't have that anymore, and I know that they had to do a lot of counter work and phone work uh, that I used to do, uh, and it is a specialized area. You can't just step up to that counter and not understand general plan and zoning. So it's not so much an entry level clerical, uh, but I know that I think that they were impacted and they were trying to do the job, but your assistant planner should do counter work, but not all the time. It, yeah. and, they sh and they should do the phone, but not for those menial tasks. And I'm not sliding myself, but there's a lot of general questions that can be answered uh, via sports services or, or even better the ser uh, development services technician I didn't have to do engineering so that's another component to this job and uh, this is this is something good for the public because the public wants service when they call so the day-to-day -day service 
And this is what they get out of this person. And it will free up the other planners to give that time a little more, uh, getting the general plan going, because uh, you do get a lot of phone calls and counter work. So I very much support this additional position. Thank you. You know what my favorite part of the job is in this in this job description is they'll be the official proofreader for the department. So um, how do you think I city clerk's about office that? just hello? <laughs> Thank how you. do you think I learned it all? Did I go from secretary to city council? Yep. You read a lot. I, I tell you. No. Thank right. you, Councilmember Resendez. Okay. Uh, one more comment, please. You ready? Uh, Council uh, Vice Mayor Richmond. When I went to work here as a cons consultant uh, on the telephone. Councilmember Lenore charged me seventy five dollars to stamp my paper so that I could get a, I can get a business license. I still remember it to this day. Thank you. That's my nine dollars now. It's California, nothing cheap here. Occupation. We don't have do we have That's so funny, Martin. There are no speakers. Okay, is there is there a motion? I make a motion that we accept uh, the approval of a new fully funded development service technician position in the Delta development service department okay, the motion is there a second second motion second all in favor aye, aye. aye. better motion. hope i don't apply motion carried <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about i might apply <laughs> we're going to move to item uh, a8 okay uh once again council this is another new position and the reason we're bringing this forward is in a recent couple of years uh, we've been uh, ending up with complaints from uh, different environmental uh, regulatory agencies uh, or codes or different policies that uh, oversee our wastewater, stormwater, uh, our hazardous materials, and we just need somebody that needs to be an expert in that area, keeps us up to date, keeps us looking forward, uh, and that, that's good to be an essential position position to keep us from getting any kind of fines or, or things like that. And once again, the department head is here to answer any of those questions that you might have about this position. Uh, yeah, actually, I'd like to hear from the department head. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, council members. So I, I, my question would be, Obviously, this can be very technical as far as all the different regulations out there from all the different departments. How is a person going to be able to follow all of those if they're not an expert in a certain department? Well, the good news is, um, I guess the, the primary function and the, the worst culprit is uh, water, the water board. Uh, we could fill that table <coughs> right now with binders that the councils and previous councils have agreed to follow all these procedures um, just off the water board alone. There's a little bit of air board with the carb and the compliance with the age of the equipment and the generators. Um, add to that uh, the stormwater and the drinking water. We got those reports that need to get out. There will be a tech position still to aid this individual and in get the water reports out, etc. But one of the things that I envision this position being able to do for us and it's really important in my mind for this because I've done this for the city already um, is they're going to be able to be at the the proposed rule meet making meetings and they can comment to the rule makers on how this is going to affect the city many years ago uh, the FAA was going to do a rule making regarding large aircraft requiring full TSA security level presence for any large aircraft because I identified them as a terrorist threat that somebody would be able to capture the plane and then fly, fly, fly it full of fuel into a target. Well, those large aircraft were the CAL FIRE tankers and the skydiving plane. And them requiring a full TSA presence would have shut down a business here in the city of Alster and it would have greatly complicated matters with CAL FIRE. So the previous city manager sent me to Nevada to make a comment at that rulemaking. And that, that truly is the greatest show on earth whenever the federal government has one of those and I encourage you to attend one of those. But after sitting there for eight hours while people were complaining about um, 
the noise and killing cows and making chickens not lay eggs anymore, and I swear all that happened. Um, I got up and I was able to give them a perspective of what this world was going to do to the city. And they sat up after eight hours of testimony and their eyes were, and they, and they took notes. That rule never came into fruition. I'm not saying that I did that, but I am saying that at least we were part of the process and we have to believe in that process and we were able to get that representation made. That to me is one of the most important p parts of this job because currently air boards passing rules, water boards always passing rules. The meetings are in San Luis Obispo. I, I got a meeting over here, I got a meeting over there. This is a critical function. Add on to the fact all the stormwater with the developers inside and outside. Recently we caught two of the outside developments in the county that on all the paperwork they put down the city was responsible for everything. Everything. We're going to maintain it. We're going to sweep the streets in the county. We're going to do it all. And the water board said, okay. We didn't know anything about it. And luckily, we reviewed it. It was kind of above and beyond because it was outside the city limits. And we caught it and we fixed it. That's well, the kind of stuff that this job needs to do. Yeah, and I agree with you. And that's what, that really is my question, though, because you are that expert, and I understand that, the airport and some of the other issues. How does a person, a new person coming in, accomplish that as far as the knowledge level i am an is expert that, when it comes to the airport i am not an expert when no it comes i understand to water. but i'm talking about a person that's going to handle this type of job for all we need to hire an expert with water so that's i guess and, what and I'm it's looking in for. the how, how are we doing this that they yeah. have to have certifications that that provide that level of yeah we 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 put some specifications in there to make sure that they have their qsds and some of the other things and i think as mike was alluding to uh, also one of the key things for us is is um being able to be a little bit ahead of the game on compliance and rules and regs rather than you know the, the, at the last minute. Like for instance, a, um, a good example also might be Chromium 6. And I know Chromium 6 discussions got tabled for a while, um, but I know they're coming back. And the idea is, is that we need to know you know, a year in advance when th those th discussions are going to be ahead rather than the day before and we get a notice of violation because we've tested in our Chromium mm -hmm. 6 levels. Right? I think that, again, this is, this is more of a function of really sort of managing and making sure that um, our reports get out timely. Um, there's somebody that's responsible for doing that to, to some extent. Um, and then if there is technical technicalities or technical work that needs to be done, that that person could go out and find the right person to do that job and manage that component. Um, I know that we do a lot of the testing in-house. I'm, I'm we're going to probably continue to try to do that as much as, as we can. Um, it is a huge job, but it's way better to have somebody be focused on that than rather than having various folks in various departments trying to do it and make, make, trying to make sure that we don't get what we call NOVs or notice of violations from the various uh, outside agencies. So. And again, I, I agree with you. I, I, it makes a lot of sense. I'm just saying this is going to be a person that's really going to have a lot of knowledge to keep up with all that. As you mentioned, the Chromium 6, and yeah. we caught that it, early and so on. It, and the airport. Kit, yeah, and of course, look, the city of Hollister isn't on the cutting edge of creating things. We steal stuff just, or we borrow stuff from other communities like everybody else. So. Um, where did this one come from? Um, the city of, uh, yeah, this was, uh, basically the city of San Luis Obispo has this very same person. So these folks are out there. It's just a matter of getting them. Okay. For the right money. Any other questions? Thank, Thank you. you for that. Uh, any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Okay. Is there a motion? I make a motion that the, uh, re that we adopt resolution 2019-161 resolution of City Council City of Hollister to approve the new fully funded environmental programs manager position in the management services department utility division. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Mr. Harris, thank you very much. We'll go to item A9. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Um, this item is a resolution approving the proposed boundary of the Mirabella 2 subdivision for annexation into Community Facilities District Number 4, which pays for public facility services such as streets, sidewalks, parks, etc. Um, and I don't often get to speak on these ones, so I just want to clarify for the public and for everyone that when we say annexation, we're not talking about annexing 
something into the city limits. All of the projects within the CFDs are already in the city limits and um, all the proposed projects are already in the city limits and this is a condition of their approval to annex them into a taxing district. Um, just for information on this project, the maximum tax for 2018-19 fiscal year is 833 per single family unit and 634 per multifamily unit on this project. Are there any questions for me? Any questions? Yeah. Uh, Vice Mayor Richmond? Yeah. Would you remind me which CFD4 is what? CFD4 is public um, services, public facilities and services. Public and facility. this project is already in CFD5. Yeah. It was the forming forming okay. project for five. But so is for, is for landscape and lighting or is uh, Yes. Okay. It's not it's not but police it, and fire. It's it's that's not police and fire. Okay, that's what I want to know. Thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions? Do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Okay, is there a motion? I move that we adopt resolution number 2019-162 approving the proposed boundaries of Mirabella 2 subdivision for the annex of territory into CFD number 4, annexation number 31. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank Move you. to item A10. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. I'm Renee Perales. Um, tonight, I have before you resolution 2019-163. This resolution would reject the bids received for the West Gateway Beautification Project Phase 1. Um, in August 2018, the City Council approved the plans and specifications for the project. And on uh, April 26, staff advertised the project for bid. And on June 12, uh, we received two bids. Uh, the engineer's estimate was approximately 1.5 million. Um, however, the um, the lowest bid came in at 3.3 million, with the second bid at 3.5 million. Um, staff recommends that the council approve the resolution. 2019-163, rejecting the bids and directing staff to have the project reevaluated. However, if council would like staff to move forward, um, you can um, reject this resolution and direct staff to return with the resolution to award a contract to the low bidder. Do you have any questions? Okay, is there any questions? Council, uh, Vice Mayor Richmond. Yeah, um, um, because my, my short-term memory is doesn't work very well anymore. <laughs> I have a general remembrance of exactly of I have a general memory it's not exactly that's the problem of, of what what was in, uh, involved I want to know did this particular bid include the roundabout at the at the um, at graph yes. at, at graph mm -hmm. yes. yeah that's what I was afraid of I was afraid you're gonna say yes <laughs> um, I'm sure a lot of people in the audience, uh, members of the public, are going to say we don't do a good job of uh, preparing the bit, uh, estimates. I just want them to know. I'm going to make a statement. In general, we saw it the other. We saw it a couple of weeks ago when we had the sewer lift. Uh, the economy is cooking like crazy, uh, and although a million bucks may sound like a lot of money to some people, if you're in the if you're in the construction business right now, this minute. A million bucks isn't looking like a big, big, huge project. It's looking like a kind of a medium, small project. And so the price has doubled on our, uh, our sewer list station. The price came in almost exactly twice, I believe, what our estimate was. And now we're here. And I'll be damned if I know what to do about it. I'll be very honest with you. I'm not, I don't have a good idea. If we reject it, that means we don't get it. We desperately need some we desperately need some uh, um, some something over on the west side to improve that um, that um, uh, gateway. And we're recommending reevaluating the project, not not discarding it completely, but just reevaluating. That's that's your recommendation. Um, with the rejection, yes, to to direct staff to reevaluate the project. And what does reevaluation uh, 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 mean? Um, does that mean look at it to, to, to what what to take out to get it under budget? Um, well, I mean, and, and part of it is is that uh, let's see, I, I think probably mostly reducing the scope. Um, yeah. If you'll recall, the the roundabout and the the project basically goes from the bridge um, essentially to 
uh, the front of JB Howard's property. Right. So I think it's just maybe narrowing the scope uh, to some extent. Um, there was a lot of work that was being done on the curve or the radius um, there, and, and maybe we look at not removing that super elevation or, I mean, there's, there, we just, we know that we, I can't come here with a straight face and say, I, I think it's a good idea for you to award the bid at $3.5 million, because no. I just really don't know where to get the other $2.5 million yeah. from. I, I wish I had that answer. Um, so there's a couple of things that we would do. We'd probably first look at how to rescope the project, um, if it's possible to do, um, and then again, then look for other sources of funding that, that may be appropriate for us to use in this particular case. Do, do, you, do you believe, um, and then between you and the staff, do you believe you could also come up with some recommendations to improve over the overall view uh, look of the gateway uh, uh, by by um, adopting some ordinances concerning concerning screening of certain areas and certain kinds of businesses that 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 don't look very well very well. I I think we I think we absolutely could. Here's here's one of the interesting things, and and um, Renee may be able to help me out on this. Um, one of the big components is obviously the actual roundabout itself. It's a hugely that's a hugely expensive piece of, of quote unquote traffic in, or design work that needs to be in there. One of the other aspects of it is is that obviously the intersection is controlled, right? There's a signal there now. Right. Okay. Maybe we eliminate the roundabout component of it and we do the beautification on the rest of it. Those are the types of things that I think we have to start thinking about a little bit. I understand that, look, nobody's more, people that were here that day will know that I, there's nobody more disappointed about not getting this done than me. Um, I but I think at, in, at, in any case, I'd, what I'd love to do is be able to continue some of the work that's been done out there already and complete as much of that project as we can. Because um, I, I believe that as a gateway into our community, um, we, you know, Mary Paxson has done a lot of work on the signs and everything else that, that we're trying to do, especially along the frontage there next to the industrial ponds. I believe it's a huge opportunity to do exactly what you're suggesting, is just doing that beautification project. I'd love to be able to come back to you with something that can get that done with the one and a half million dollars that we thought we had. I, I would also um, ask the city council to adopt uh, if they give you that, um, if someone makes a motion to give you that uh, instruction uh, to adopt, um, uh, ask the uh, staff uh, through you, through the city manager, to look at ordinances that we can adopt that will not be very expensive to the people who are out there. Uh, for instance, uh, the 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 the, uh, the the junkyard or whatever you call it, to make sure uh, there's a basic screening from the from the roadway. Um, I see it in other in other uh, communities where they put up the weave that you put in the fence. You know what I'm talking about. It's not a very expensive, but if you if if you fairly delve it out, it has a good effect overall. So uh, I'll just throw that out through you uh, through this speech to the to the rest of the rest of the city council. Thank you, Councilmember Lenore. I very much agree. I was really excited about the West Gateway beautification. Uh, I could do without the roundabout if we could do the rest of the gateway, and, and we do need to screen the old Del, Del Curdo property. I don't know who owns it now, but it's, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vince. <laughs> so uh, that would be a good screener, and I think J.B. Howard, when he develops, that's going to obviously complete the public right-of-way improvements that we so desperately need for that connectivity. Um, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I'd like to see the traffic calming. I, 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 uh, the, the West Gateway should be tended to. It's a major gateway. The South Gateway, the, yeah, we have the tra traffic going to Pinnacles National Highway, but the West Gateway is very visual, and it's, it, it's in its time. So if we could, I don't have a problem with that tra traffic light. Yeah, I know. The, the, the roundabouts, maybe they look nicer, but I don't see a big backup at that light. So I, I'd like to proceed, if the rest of the council, as Marty stated, is to uh, don't do that and then do the beautification part. Uh, uh, I, I was sad too. I, I want I want this done. It, it's, it's time. Uh, it already looks better, but it's got a long way to go. And if we have to cough up some funding, then so be it. Thank you. Can I recommend? Uh, and I, I'm seeing this happen throughout I'm in the construction industry too and I've 
seeing this on projects all over the place. And a lot of times you'll get your answers just by having a sit down meeting with each of these, the top two, mm -hmm. and ask them, what could we have done? What's, why is it so much higher? What do you recommend? And you'd be surprised. And so often we'll have a set of plans and give a number that's just outrageous. Mm -hmm. And the owners will come back and say, why is it so outrageous? Well, basically say, because you made it outrageous. And here's, you know, here's the question. Why do you have this? Why are you doing this? So on and so on. And leave a meeting, it's 30%, 40% lower. And they're shocked by this. I really recommend having those conversations, especially in today's competitive bidding world. Mm -hmm. Because I know I've had some conversation with some of these uh, major generals that do this road work. And they say it all the time. You guys make your projects so much more expensive than they have to be. You just need to sit down with us and understand what's going on out there in today's world. Okay. And I really, I think it's probably the better answer. And then come back and what is a new vision for the beautification of that area? It can be much cheaper and probably, at the end of the day, it'll probably look better. So, maybe doable. Okay. Okay. Council Member Sendis. I'd like to echo the same sentiments as my fellow council members. I am extremely disappointed to not see this project go through. Um, nothing has been done there for a number of years. I don't know if anything's been done since they put in the light. Um, but even I agree that the price of the bid is way overpriced. Uh, I like the suggestions that uh, the mayor and Councilwoman Spencer, sorry, Councilwoman Lenore had suggested. Um, maybe we can look at some different options. I'm glad to see that the Complete Streets is going through. We just approved that earlier. Maybe we can look at tying in um, that to this. And then what's the status of the sign? We've got a sign paid for and built that's supposed to be installed over there. Where are we with that? And how is that going to tie into what we do? I apologize, Councilman. I don't. I'll, I'll have to get back to that. I'll email you folks tomorrow or something. I'll get with Mary and, and find out what the status of that is. Um, okay. I'm sorry. No. Well, and then lastly, I just want to say that Mary has been instrumental in getting grants and helping us to improve um, the west side. She's leaving. It's going to be a huge loss. I'm curious as to who is writing grants, who is going to continue to write grants. Um, if we can get some more information, because I want to know... Who on our staff is writing grants? How many grants are we getting approved? What the outcome is? Because sometimes we hear that we're going for grants and then we never find out what the, um, the outcome was of that. Um, so I'd just like to get some more information about who's writing grants, um, what the outcome of, is of them, and the number of grants. But uh, yeah, I'd like for us to leave here with some, not just completely saying no to the project, but coming back with some more options if we can. Okay. Okay, thank you. Do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Okay. Is there a motion? So I'll go ahead and proceed with resolution number 2019-163, rejecting all the current bids <coughs> for the West Gateway Beautification Project, phase one. Okay, those motions are a second? All second. second. Motion is second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to item A11. Thank you. Good evening, council members and your honor. I'm looking for a supplemental appropriation of $12,173. Um, I was surprised to learn the other night when the fire chief was up here and you bought a wire, water truck and then you surplus a water truck that the water truck we had couldn't be used to go uh, primary response because it didn't have the right equipment in it. So this puts that equipment in it. Okay. So that's why we're here. Any, any questions? I have a question. So does that mean this will be the water tender that we're going to replace the one that, no. Is this going to be a water tender? Yeah. But the big one's leaving. Are we going to need another water tender still? Is that off subject? No. no you're right. I'm just not qualified to answer that question because okay. I'm not your fire chief. Okay. Yeah. No, the, I, the idea is that the, the department, the fire department will ultimately have, again, two water okay. tenders. This will ultimately be a third but at least oh. between we get those right we, before we get the other okay. two this one will be accessible uh, okay. for the fire department and we'll have the lights and, and the communications that's necessary so for we'll ultimately operate. have three yeah. okay. <coughs> thank you this is not the two hundred fifty one thousand dollar water tender is that what we say? Okay. Yeah. 
That seems like a bargain to me. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is actually a water tender that Mike's, uh, is in Mike's operations on a regular basis. Yeah, but in an emergency, they can yeah. use it. Right. Any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Okay, is there a motion? I'll make a, a motion resolution 2019-164 resolution city of council city of Hollister appropriating $12,173 from the general fund reserves to equip the water truck with emergency equipment and safety lighting. And just a question, do we have to do an individual poll on this because it's money moving out of the reserves? Do we have to actually uh, poll the... Uh, we have something in our municipal code about polling people. When I, I would ask that you please do a roll call. Okay. Thank you. The roll call. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Sundas. Aye. Vice Mayor Richmond. Aye. Council, or sorry, Mayor Velasquez. Yes. Council Member Spencer. Aye. Council Member Lenore. Aye. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Move to item A12. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Brian Swanson, Development Services Director for the City of Hollister. Uh, th this is an exciting agenda item. It's been a long time coming, in about a year we've been working on this with our uh, cell tower negotiator. would like to just kind of go over the staff report so the public can kind of hear uh, what the deal is, if that's okay. okay. Uh, the city has an active uh, lease with Crown Castle for a wireless communications facility at a cellular tower at 420 Hill Street. So it's at the it, it's at it's top of the hill by the old engineering department. Um, the city council approved Amendment Seven to the professional professional services agreement with development and public finance. Uh, DP, uh, DPF is a, a contractor we work with uh, with CFDs. They've done a lot of great jobs for us. Uh, they also offer uh, cell tower negotiations, and so um, we felt that it was necessary to have someone in the industry to actually help us uh, negotiate uh, cellular tower deals. So um, on February 4th, 2019, um, the city and Crown Castle came together with uh, somewhat of an approved uh, deal uh, to lease the site for 50 years. Um, the contra our, our sub-consultant, Steve Seal, uh, listed uh, the uh, cellular tower on his um, auction site, and we received three bids. Uh, the low bid was 850000 from Lease Advisors. Uh, the second was $925,000 from Everest Infrastructure Partners. And the top bid was $1.4 million from C Crown Castle. Um, <clears throat> again, this is a 50-year lease. Uh, so we, we, own, we own the tower, we own the land. It's simply a 50-year lease with Crown Castle. Uh, they are paying us up front $1.4 million. Um, and if they expand uh, their area um, up to 200 square feet, so if they add 200 square feet to their tower site um, and bring in more carriers for their tower, the carriers that they bring in, the additional ones, we get 50% of the revenue that those new tenants will generate at the site. That is if they expand um, the site and add tenants. Um, the, the fee that uh, we will be paying the consultant uh, that brokered the deal uh, is 84000 So the net revenue that the city will receive uh, is $1,316,000. Uh, uh, $1, so um, you know, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Get the check to the bank quick. Yeah. <laughs> Brian wants credit for that revenue. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> your, your number, your numbers are looking better. <laughs> there you no, go. It's a good deal, and you know we've had a we've had a, a long term lease with Crown Castle, and the lease expired, and so we've been over, we've been on a uh, holdover pattern. And so um, the one thing that I'll say is patience is always key in everything. And uh, Crown Castle has worked well with our uh, negotiator, and, it, and this is a great deal for both sides, to be honest with you. So thank you very much. Yep. Any questions? Uh, Vice Mayor uh, Brian, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I just have a question. Do we sure. need to, since I don't know exactly the way the lease reads, do we need to put some money aside for future um, uh, maintenance, uh, for instance, on that tower? Nope. Uh, they're going to do all that? They, they take over, yeah. Including, including the, 
the structure, the actual structure. That's right. Not just the electronics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, and you Thank know, you. there's one thing that we all sh we should, as society and technology moves forward, cell towers are getting smaller and smaller, and so um, this is a good opportunity for the city to 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 broker a good deal with what we have up yeah. there. So sounds good. I just want to yep. make sure, in case we had to take some of this money and put it aside yep. for future future maintenance, to, to make sure it, it meets the police requirements. Thank you very sure. much. Thank you. Any speaker cards? Um, there's no speaker cards unless there's any questions for Jennifer Jackson, um, who's here on behalf of the lessee entity. But if not, there's no speakers. Can we check with you? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we adopt uh, Resolution 2019-165, authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of a ground lease and a ground lease with CCTMILLC, Crown Castle, um, for a cellular tower, tower at 420 Hill Street. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Mayor, that we adjourn in honor of Independence Day, July 4th, 2019. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Don't forget the fly-in. The fireworks. <laughs>